blunderbuss. So I had a commenter on one of the videos made here recently asking about this thing and about kind of wanting to see a review on it. So we'll do a little review on it, a little talking about it. All right, blunderbuss. Now what you saw me shooting there was a 69 caliber round ball wrapped in tow. That's not really how this thing's meant to be shot though. This is a shotgun. And a shotgun needs shot. I do ha have, however, though, a little experimental cartridge I made here. This is a this is birdshot cartridge number five, and it's got wadding behind it with 2F powder, and then on top of that I have some ground up 3F. So let's just try that right quick. never read of anybody actually putting it in their paper cartridge. Alright. Alright. And we'll shove that down. I do like loading this thing though. Well, that's a little weird. Now I see why they don't load these with paper cartridges. <laughs> they tend to want to fold over. All right, so my experimental paper cartridge, probably not, not the best idea for a, a blunderbuss. The paper pulled it over, the shot kind of spread out when you tried to hammer it down. It just didn't work very well. But we did finally get it down, and now it's cocked, and lo or it's loaded, not cocked. Uh, this one's probably gonna kick me a little bit though. So here we go. What do we know about this thing? Well, actually, blunderbusses, interestingly enough, there's not a whole lot of history out there on them. I've heard everything from they were invented for mariners, which is probably the uh, most likely thing I can think of. They were invented for, uh, you know, protecting coaches or what, what have you. But I've heard everything from that to they were invented by uh, Arabs for riding on camels. So, yeah, nobody really knows, but we do know where the name comes from. Blunderbuss. That is Dutch for Thunderpipe. And if you've ever shot one of these things, and you've heard someone shot, it does sound like thunder rolling through the hills whenever you get done shooting it, which is kind of cool. Um, now, about this particular one right here, this one is from Military Heritage. And like I said, I had somebody comment asking kind of about if you, we had to drill our own flash holes. Yes, you do have to drill flash holes with these. It does say on the website, non-firing replica or whatever, what have you. But the reason they do that is because you cannot sell, in some countries, you can't sell a uh, musket, even a muzzle loader, even a flintlock. You can't sell flintlocks with flash holes in them because it's considered a weapon or a firearm. So what they do is they just don't put the flash hole in and it's a non-firing replica. So, yeah, that's kind of uh, kind of the deal with that. Now, some people have also asked, are these guns safe to shoot? Because some of these are made in India. Well, I will just, let's just get a close-up of this barrel right here. It's about 7 16 of an inch thick. So, I don't think you gotta worry about the barrel on this one, especially blowing up. But then some people say, well, I heard about, re there was, they happen in reenactments all the time. The, the brown besses blow up. Well, there's only really been one documented case of a brown best blowing up in a reenactment of one of these Indian made guns. And that was because um, the guy who was shooting it had loaded it about five or six times what he was supposed to and then wadded it and it blew up in his face, obviously. So, have we had any trouble with them? Eh, some of the fit and finish on some of these is a little iffy, but really, Military Heritage has been really good about dealing with this and everything, so I'll leave a link in the description to their website on where you can buy one of these. So yes, this was definitely a Mariner's weapon. And yes, if you want to go there, it was probably even a pirate's weapon, which I guess, you know, whatever. But 
yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a cool little piece of history. It's an extremely thick barrel on this thing. Uh, let's go ahead. It's had plenty of time to cool. Let's go ahead and give her another shot here. If I can have one of you boys wad me up a ball of, ball of toe here. Now, this powder horn is a little bit of a, a little bit of a project to get. Now, this thing is a little more tricky to load than a regular musket. Regular musket, I just put my put the butt of the musket on my foot, and I can just load it up here. However, this one, if I try that, yeah, it doesn't work so good. Powder charge. And I'm going to mess with all of that. All that here. All right. Like I said, with this toe, you got to be pretty careful. This stuff does like to tend to catch on fire. And I think this right here is what the blunderbuss is really for, making it easier to load regular stuff besides. Uh, paper cartridges. That was a lot easier to load than a, it would have been to load a patch ball and a musket. Alrighty, let's go ahead and prime this thing and I'm gonna step really close because this thing, like I said, I think it would have been used for, uh, for naval warfare. And I don't know if you know this, but naval warfare, you're probably not doing very many sniper shots. You're probably fighting at about 15, 20 feet. So I'm gonna get really close. Hey, we did actually close UVB in that belt jug. That thing must have really spread out. Huh. Interesting. Alright, I'm gonna try to hit the gong here. Okay, we can do this. Yeah, that's the blunder bus. However, I would like to go take a look at this milk jug right here. We have one, two, three, four, four BBs hit this thing, and you can see how spread out they were. There, 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 there. And, yeah, not very many of them even penetrated out the back. So, that tells you how much this thing spreads at, what, 15 yards? Because, we landed five hits on that thing. All the rest of that shot went somewhere else. All the rest of 60 some odd BBs went around it. All right, we're back here this evening with the blunder bus because our flint got dull and we did not have a napping tool. And so the flint's a little sharper now and we're going to start priming with 4F and see if that helps our ignition issues. What I think is happening is Unlike the brown bass, this blunderbuss from Military Heritage has a lock on it that is basically their Dragoon lock for a pistol, which means it has small flint, small amount of sparks. So what I think we're going to have to prime with 4F to get sure ignition every time. So anyway, this is how we're going to load her up. I'm going to take my powder horn. I'm going to set this on... This, this gun can take a massive load. It's got a really thick barrel, but I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. I'm gonna go with 80 grains of 2F down the barrel. Measured. Right there. I'm just gonna level that off. Pour 80 grains straight down the barrel. Now, I don't know exactly what this weight is. It might be overkill. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same grain charge of number five shot. Fill it up, dump it down the barrel, and we're going to do that twice, and I'm pretty sure that comes out to a little more than a two ounce load, so that's way heavier than most shotguns that shoot today. Aim right in the middle of that pile. Let's have the best luck with you. All right, let's go see what we did. All right, now we got a few more hits. That's that range. We have a hit here. One, two, broke this one. 
three, four, five down there. So basically, we covered the whole area because there's a hole in every single clay except for the bottom and the left. So you're getting over, you're getting uh, roughly, probably 15 yards. We were getting, I don't know, maybe 13 feet of spread. That's pretty good for clearing a ship deck. So uh, a few things you should know about this. I call it a shotgun, this blunderbuss from Military Heritage, when you get it, you do have to drill it out. A few things to take note of if you're left-handed like me or my nephew Martin, this dude is a beard burner. And uh, it'll burn your hand a little bit because that locks right there and you don't have a lot of room to get your hand farther forward. Another thing about the blunderbuss is when you're locked down on this thing like this and you have a heavy load, that explosion is going off right there and it is kind of earth shattering coming out of that tube the way it does. I mean, it, they call it a blunderbuss for a reason. It comes out of the and, and one more thing, they have the uh, saying, kicks like a mule. This little bitty light gun, even with that heavy barrel, with any kind of heavy load, whew, she kicks like a mule. But uh, overall, I'm impressed. If you were shooting at a covey of uh, quail right there, you'd have got a big chunk of them because it really puts the spread on. Well, thanks for watching.